Okay. Uh, great. So, uh, hello everyone. So to today, um, we're gonna be like basically continuing last uh, yesterday's um, uh, tutorial, in a sense. So yesterday we talked generally about um, codes of learning and codes of inference, and. Um, by the end of the tutorial, we we went through an example of uh, using causal links to to basically uh, to follow for inference learning. So regarding that, and be, because this uh, like um, the original content for this uh, tutorial is not um, is not going to introduce so many new things. So um, I just wanted to go over the use of cause and links um, in more details. Like yesterday, I was like more hand wavy and I didn't explain like uh, all the steps or like what is like the methods that are used um, like in details in, in uh, behind like behind the scene. Uh, so let's start by like if you have any questions before we we move on we before we before we start so just like what is basically like let me be more precise maybe so you know this um your understanding of the causal learning uh challenge of this week so it's only like a what's the basic part let's say of this of the challenge there's an extra part about logistic optimization but that's um like a, as an extra part uh okay so regarding the causal learning challenge uh for this week um what is your understanding of what you need to do and um, like and if, if you have any particular like if you tell me your understanding or like if you have partic any particular questions let me start with that just to make this like more useful for you So, yes, it works. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so, in in my perspective, uh, our understanding was the first thing would be uh, my my plan is actually to make an EDA, uh, then try to add feature engineering, uh, also visualization so for uh, the task two uh, i think uh, there is also uh, more uh, visualization needed maybe i didn't get started on that because i'm actually trying to figure out the feature engineering part so after that uh, if we made a good visualization uh, and uh, like inference the next one would be uh, the causal inference or learning so i think yeah so the main objective is actually to optimize the logistic and answer the questions like the issues of like uh, the not the not being optimal the placement of drivers being not op optimal or to fulfill the number of requests. So I think uh, for the next, after the causal learning or causal inference, we, I plan to actually do the logistic optimization part. So that's what I missed. Okay, good. Uh, so this is a good uh, summary, I think. Um, uh, next, uh, let's take uh, a Michael. Michael, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, my general understanding is by using the data as given, try to understand why the unfulfilled orders are, how how can we fix the unfulfilled old orders for the future reference. That's my understanding, but uh, I have one question. So in the data, there are two data, but in the second data, uh, the columns are uh, the driver actions is accepted 
and the other ones are rejected. For example, if the driver, the order ID is uh, like uh, 392001, the first uh, driver will accept and do or finish the task. So the others, the other drivers in the same, uh, in the same place will be rejected because so that that means the all 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 the tasks or or in the by the company is finished or fulfilled so i don't know how can we use the rejected part or if not can we use the other the other data uh okay so um All right, so I am not sure I got um, the like. What is the rejected? Is it the is it referring to the driver or to the order? Yeah, the order. Like because, for example, if if the one one customer asks for for the drive for one drive, so it will get one driver. So the other drivers in the same compound will get rejected, yeah? Because there, yeah. Is, there should be one order and one acceptance. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what is the issue with that? Like, what, what is your question exactly? Can you repeat, sorry? Okay, so if that is the case, how, how do we, so do we leave the, this data and use the other one? Because if we, we, if we, if we only use uh, the rejected part, I, I don't think it has a meaning or a use, usefulness because the, it only has the latitude and longitude and the others are null. And uh, it's yeah. the driver action is rejected. So can we eliminate it? Can we leave it and uh, do by the other data set or? Okay, so the uh, one 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 data set is uh, con con uh, contains only the completed orders, so it has like um, it's uh, the how to say it's the driver that were accepted and accepted the uh, the like the orders and they did actually finish the um, the delivery right. The other one has. Um, delivery requests my client fulfilled or not fulfilled so um okay so i haven't looked at the data myself so but you have uh, like for each order i suppose there are multiple driver ids and then driver action will be okay so is there, is there a question or let's a comment about this The thing is that uh, okay, so I, uh, I okay, so let's leave this question to the end because, like, I haven't looked through my, the data myself, so I cannot really answer the the, the questions right away. If like uh, probably your colleagues have like more insight into this than me, um, there might be like uh, you might discover by the end of this analysis. Just let me say this: I discovered by the end of the, this analysis that you need more data that you cannot really answer the questions because you don't have enough data or you don't have the right the right kind of data for for your for your um for all your questions so you might not be able to answer all of the questions um in the but the thing is that you have to arrive at this result you have to justify like yes i cannot answer this question because this part of the data that is necessary for me is not there so i cannot answer this question really uh so it's not, i know it's not a very helpful uh, answer at the moment so let me get to into that later after like uh, um, I look into the data myself so I can actually answer the question so okay given that does anyone else want to like maybe summarize what their understanding of the project in particular focusing on the causal learning part Okay, Abu Bakr. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, like, my uh, my question uh, to my previous one is actually on uh, the what do we call yeah feature engineering part. So, yeah. uh, like, 
where, where should I get the data or what kind of feature? I'm thinking of some kinds of uh, data like on traffic conditions, but on the Lagos perspective, I think this is found in Lagos, Nigeria. From yeah. the longitude latitude, I've seen that. So how, how and where uh, can I get more uh, to get more features so, for the data? So, okay, so you have uh, at least for like part of your data, you have time and you have uh, uh, like uh, the location, right? Don't you? Uh, yeah, if, even if you, we can calculate the distance in the time as some other extra features. Exactly. So you, if you have the time, you can actually find in like a publicly available information about like, um, for example, you can find the publicly available information about the about the weather um, at that specific specific time. Um, of course, you can also give in. Yeah. So I the, don't. The, the weather. Yes. Okay. Okay. Continue. Yes, so uh, I'm not sure about the traffic, if you can find that information or not, like if you can find it. You are going to be looking for publicly available data, of course, because like uh, where else can you get the data at this moment? Um, of course, if you, if you like working maybe more in within the company or like more in consultation, you can ask the company for more information. But at, like, let's say this is a, the, the data you get from the company, you cannot change that. So you cannot ask for more data about like specific about the drivers or more about the um, specific about the orders, but any publicly available data and you can find them. Um, so there are weather, there is, I don't know about uh, um, what else, what kind of data I think you can find. I'm not sure you can find traffic. Yeah, weather seems uh, ideal. Yes. It can be found. So uh, I was actually initially thinking about the uh, traffic data from Google's Google Map since, but I don't know. I didn't actually got more research on it. Yes. So the thing is that uh, you have to look at the specific time, and I don't know if it's going to be uh, because I don't know how specific actually the data here is because you have, for example, you have I'm looking just at the data. Uh, definition and you have like trip start time and trip end time. You have the trip origin and the trip destination, but you don't have exactly what is the trajectory, right? That was taken um, between the origin and the destination. Uh, what like? But when you are in when you you are enriching your data, you also have to think about what is the goal, like what are the questions you want you want to answer. So there are things about like where is um, the driver with respect to the the order, right? That's one of the questions. Like um, let me just look at the challenge document for a bit. Um, so the questions is uh, given drivers are called, recommended to move one kilometer every 30 minutes in a certain direction, what happens to the number of unfulfilled requests. So this is about the location. Uh, you have, like, if you know the location of the orders within five kilometer accuracy, what happens to the unfulfilled request. So there is like things about, um, yeah, so maybe the, the distance between the order and the order like um the pickup or the like delivery i don't know it's like uh, if that information is available in the data and uh, where the driver are um there is of course a number of drivers this is something you can just accumulate for each uh, for each um, order so uh you have to think keep in mind what these kind of questions you need to answer when you are trying to enrich your data of course um so it's not only about getting new data from publicly available. You also have the data you have, you have to like manipulate and compute new things, like computing the distance, computing like, I don't know, depending on like uh, what is available data there. So um, yeah, so you can create new features just from the data you have. 
you can also drop features that you think are not uh, not um, necessary um because like as we talked maybe yesterday about is that like when you do this causal inference uh, or when you are structuring the causal graph this is computationally um it's not computation expensive it's not it's not a, something that like if you can reduce the number of features you know knowingly what is the irrelevant features that is a good thing to do um so yeah uh, uh so let me see I'm okay. did, did, did i answer your question i don't know somewhat or do you have um something to add okay so um barring i don't know what happened to our work uh can you hear me well okay thank you so let's just um okay uh what i'm going to do is now is just going to go through um share my screen it's not okay uh Okay, so this is like the presentation of yesterday itself. And you just remember, like I'm just going to go through, like we went through like what is the difference between causality and correlation and like uh, how to learn causality. Um, so we talked about what is like uh, structuring, like um, causal discovery or structuring basically the causal relationships between, between our variables. Causal inference is measuring the effects or like, uh, what we call later on um, any intervention, basically. So it, the causal effect is just like any quantitative um, effect, but um, you can also do an actual intervention and see what happens because of it. Uh, we talked about what is a causal graph. There is a graph that we use like the relationship between variables. And, um, and then we talked about causal modeling and basically we focused on the, on the structural causal model there are other like the potential outcome framework is another kind of causal modeling there are another like uh, there are other actually kinds of modeling as well so but we focus on this one the one that uses causal graphs actually and builds um we talked about that what you need here is like a causal graph and a structural equations these are like the causal graph basically shows you like this variable causes other variable just like in direction as a causal direction uh, the causality direction while the structural equation is actually telling us what is the probability uh, um, dependence basically between these uh, between these variables so uh, or like what is the, how much is the effect of the causation here um so okay so we didn't go into details of like uh of the structural equations we we basically mentioned that um so just going through this is a um was a example of a graph causal graph and we talked about like uh the essential equations so essential equations actually could be um we didn't go into the results about this, but conceptual equation could be like uh, linear. Like you can assume, it's like kind of an assumption, uh, that like the the relationship between the cause and outcome is um, is a, a kind of a linear um, relationship, and structural equations that way. Um, while the, another way, and this is what is attributed to the Judea pearl, is uh, a non-parametric non structural equations. And uh, basically here, the, the relationship is not exactly, is not linear, it's just a function that is, um, okay, so I'm just mentioning this linear and not linear because I'm going to uh, talk about it a bit later when we talk about causal, causal links, um, uh, 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 library, yeah. Question. Uh, okay, this maybe it's not for me. Um, okay, so this is a discussion about the data. Uh, we'll leave it for now. Uh, so, okay, and we talked about like uh, what kind of uh, what 
just what is do calculus and this is like so when you intervene when you do an intervention basically changing um if you have a causal graph like this one which is showing that y is caused by both x and t t is also caused by x so this is the direction of the of the arrow and then if you do what you want to measure is if you change the value of t what happens to y so thinking about how uh like uh, what we the data we're dealing with here is observational data so it is already collected it's not something that we didn't go into reality and did any kind of intervention in real life and then measure the effect what we are doing here is that we have an observation data that is already collected and then we going to say like what will happen if we have changed this which is like um, much less expensive of course than the alternative the alternative of course is doing um um randomized control like experiments where you actually go into like um like what they do in the drug uh experimentations they actually go and give people treatment or this is an intervention here and see measure actually what is the effect um so here this is just like a hypothetical it's not a hypothetical, a hypothetical change and you see like uh, what is the answer to that um and yesterday this is where like um i said like uh, these are tools so uh, i didn't mention a lot about uh, the other tools we went through causal next but we didn't mention about the other two but okay so what we wrote we, we do actually what is relevant is causal next the other two don't do this they don't create a causal graph for us and um, so you can actually use them for maybe the the causal inference part but it's not going to create for you the causal the causal graph uh, to begin with i looked around basically looking for something that is caused uh, sorry is that a question um Okay, sorry, I, I, because I hear the sound of the of the message coming, and I think it's a question. Uh, sorry. So what I was saying is that, like, I was looking for like make convenient library like uh, Cosa Next, and I couldn't find one. Maybe I don't know if you, someone of you have found something. Like, it would be nice to mention it, um, just for comparison thing. So what is great about Cosa Next is that it's like we can do the two things we want to do first is create a causal graph and then basically uh, be able to um, calculate uh, do interventions on it or answer questions about like uh, causal inference questions so yeah causal next is a, is a python library that uses it uses a structural um a, a structural causal modeling models with Python, uh, Python uh, networks, I'm not sure, like Python networks, I'm not sure about the pronunciation. And it uses to create, and this is a question of like Hillary asked this question yesterday about this Notiers. So Notiers is, um, is an algorithm to create the causal graph. And um, my answer was very, like uh, yesterday was not uh, like to Hillary's question was, uh hand wavy in 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 a way i didn't actually give you give the actual like how notice does this um create the causal graph but just um actually looking at uh, okay so yeah so this is like the paper for uh notice and you can see it does it has nothing to do with well, it's not had nothing to do with causal inference but it's not about cause uh, it's not about causal the problem not just algorithm is not about causal inference it's about creating a dag so a dag is this uh, directed um uh acyclical graph and the point is when you have a set of uh, prop or problem we have a set of variables right I don't know. Um, I don't have a, a nice graph to or something to show this. But um, okay. and there is nothing here on the paper that you can understand directly. But the point is that we have uh, a number of um, of variables. 
So let's say, okay, let me just uh, looking at a cause and graph. So what we want to create is a graph like this one, but we have, okay, so if you have three, three variables and you want to create um, like, all the possible, like, um, sorry, the the possible um, causal graph. Okay, just face your. Uh, so you want to to you want you don't want just the general any causal graph. You want the one that is reflects your actual uh, causation relationships, right? And ultimately, this is not an easy um, problem. And Add to that is, is the search space, the search space, like basically the possible number of graphs you can create depends on the number of vertices you have or the number of variables. So for three, you can imagine that all the kind of um, graphs you can you can create with three vertices is the number is going to be, I don't know. Um, you can have all three vertices disconnected, for, of course. You can have like uh, maybe X is causing Y and T, Y could be causing X and T and so on and so forth. So um, let's say if I start with just two variables, not three, three is um, already a big, <laughs> there are already several options, but if you have only two, two variables, you can have a disconnected graph, you can have X causing T or T causing X and that's it. You cannot have another um like this is like your, your three options and if you are you're looking for a solution between these three okay and basically you can if you are calculating because what we talked about is that we have these structural equations right so um okay so the structural equations here are going to be uh we are going to be looking for um how to say it? it's a my minimizing the the loss so compared to the data we have for these structural equations over like the space of all possible graphs but as i said and if you think about it just a little bit you can think you can find that like once as as the number of variables increase as the number of possible graphs increase and this this problem becomes more and more uh, like harder and harder basically and this so uh, what i'm just saying here it's like a theoretical background for how uh, this no tier algorithm go about basically solving this issue so what they do is that they solve the problem of um, looking for the right duck Okay, that satisfies, um, like minimizes, uh, like uh, the loss function. So the, the loss function is uh, the difference between um, the, let's say, predicted value and um, the, the true value for, for from the data. So it's like, um, so yes, just like, uh, let me just find the equation. So this is basically the loss. You can see so x is my data and so x is the real like um, the output or the real value and x multiplied by w w is like some kind of weight matrix that is like multiplying the parents of uh, the particular variable uh with some weights uh and basically so this is a loss function the difference between the true and the predicted according to the linear structural equations. So they are using linear structural equations in this algorithm. Um, and basically, so this is what basically what the algorithm does. It minimizes, so it's looking through the data. So you have data, your data can be continuous or can be um, like discrete, it's fine for this algorithm. And it basically is going to be going through, like create or going through all possible um uh dogs and calculating the weights that like uh basically um that minimizes the loss so i hope this is like clear at least uh, even though i'm saying it like uh, 
in words, but like uh, I hope it's like that. The main idea is clear. Um, okay, so this is uh, the the one of the main things that they use for codonics. The next thing they use is that they use um, uh, okay, so they use the structural causal models. And uh, so getting after you get the causal graph, so causal graph defines for you the the relationships between between like uh, like which variables is causing which, and basically what you do after that is that you uh, fit it with uh, probability uh, distributions, and um, basically yeah so. It's like uh, using um, uh, maximal. It, it can it can use it one of two like maximal likelihood as estimation, or um, or by the parameter estimation to calculate the parameters of these distributions. So by the end, what you will get is that is um, the probability distributions for each variable depending on its. Uh, um, that its parents or its like causes basically. So yeah, this is just generically. And um, I don't know if I clarified anything, but this is like the, so just like what I'm mentioning here is what exactly the, um, the algorithms are based on as uh, mathematically basically uh, or statistically. And um, other kind of uh, libraries might be using different or can have like other options. At least within Codonix, there are a few options you can use as well. So um, these are things that you can keep in mind. So before I will go through uh, through the same example I went through yesterday. I don't know, like because like uh, if there are anything that we or were missed yesterday. But before I do that, there is any questions or anything that you really want to go particularly through. Okay, you can stop me at any moment um, if you want. So, so this is the example from yesterday. And uh, okay, so again, haven't run this locally, but um, you need um, like uh, Python uh, install, installing this code next. You need Python point three point eight or up to three point eleven, so um, to install it actually and use it. Um, and this was the data that was used again. This was data about his students and um, with several factors. Um, starting from school, sex, age, address, family size, and like uh, um, parents' education, um, health, and other stuff. And the goal, the question, so you have to keep in mind what kind of questions you want to answer. Basically, they want to predict um, their, like the probability of the student to pass or fail from this data. Um, okay. So as uh, as it, like um, we said before, you first, the first, there are two steps, main, two main steps. The one is structure, like uh, creating the causal graph. And the second one is fitting the model um, with conditional distribution, probability, conditional probability distributions. So uh, there are two options. To create the causal graph is not two, but basically you can create it yourself. If you think you know what is the cause causal relationship, you can create the graph yourself using this uh, from causal next structure structure model. You can add, you can define like certain instance and define your edges between um, between your variables if you want, and um, so, and of course, there are visualization, um, basically plotting uh, um, functionality from from Poson next to do that. Seeing causal graph that 
um, health causes both the grade and absences. Um, so this is like a, a simple causal graph. But of course, you can also learn the structure. And this is the thing that we want to do. Uh, so here they're using no tears from um, the algorithm we talked about. And they use it directly. So they have, um, okay, so they do some kind of cleaning dropping some some of the some of the columns that they want they don't want to include in the data so they just like pandas they read the data uh, and dropped some of the columns um and here um also yeah so have to to change all the columns into into numerical values and they used basically a uh, label encoder to change all um all uh, categorical values into into numerical values. So basically, these labels are like each number uh, represent a particular category. Um, and after that, once you have all your data at numeric values, you can use the notice um, uh, and the notice um, algorithm. Here, just directly from your pandas data uh, data frame, and so when you run this, it will usually take some time for you to for it to run, depending on the size of your data and the number of features you have. Um, this will and this will run, and uh, okay. As I said yesterday, the plot if you the plot you will get or the cause graph you get will be fully connected. Because what matters, like you, if you remember, the, the notice calculates the weights, like uh, for each of these edges. So there is a weight for each edge, and um, basically, what you next you do is you're going to drop the anything, the any weight that is too small, you can drop it, or you can just keep the strong um, uh, relationships and leave anything that is too is too weak so like uh, here what they use is 0.8 but basically you can um i don't know anything like i don't i don't uh, i cannot think of a reason why it has to be 0 0.8 if you can choose you can experiment or choose a different number if you prefer the thing is that uh, basically the algorithms and the numerical algorithms from North Notice can produce really small weights. So these some of these weights are really, really very close to zero, but they are not exactly zero. So you you have to at least drop some of them by setting it to to some value. Uh, but choosing some um, uh, like um, relatively like so between zero and one, so choose some value that is uh, big enough so that like uh, you get some reasonable graph of course this is not the end of it you can still look at your graph and correct any problems in your in your in your graph by removing some of the links that you think are makes no sense or you don't want to have um you can add any uh, any link you think you it should should be there you can do that before the learning actually by um add using like uh it's here uh, okay, somewhere. Um, um, so I'm define the structure. This is where I am here. Um, okay. I'm sorry, just like um, from. Okay, so beforehand, you can define that some of your, um, for some of your like uh, structures should not be there. Yeah, so here, for example, it's a taboo edge, so you want you don't want this to be there, and you can also basically just uh, remove like one. You can um, prevent one uh, parent from being there or one one child from being there as well so you can prevent the edge or can like remove all edges from a particular um 
a particular vertex beforehand. So when we, uh, as you do the learning, you can actually add this and you can add the threshold directly there um, with like uh, in the learning. Okay, and get like, uh, inspect the graph and see like if you, um, if it makes sense. So, so like this is not part of like what you can see in the documentation from from Coda Next, but in the challenge document, you were um, there was a recommendation for for testing the stability of the of the graph. So you start by creating a graph using all the whole data. This is what we what we did or what they did also in the documentation here. But here, uh, uh, this is a like um, a, a suggestion is uh, to just to test that the, this graph you're getting is stable. Meaning, if you get new, this you're, you want to stimulate uh, that you are getting new data and like new data in the future and seeing if the graph you have makes sense means that it doesn't change much. And to do that, uh, so the simulation is going to be you're going to like. Uh, partition your data instead of using all of the, so you already used all of the data to create, to create the first graph. So now you can go and like take like 60% uh, of your data and create, uh, use again, no tears algorithm to create a new causal graph and compare the two graphs basically. So of course you can create, compare this by, 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 by like, uh, by looking at it, but you can actually use some kind of, um, numerical measure. So one suggestion is to use Jacker similarity index is so Jacker similarity index defines um, the like the similarity between two sets. And so this is Jacker similarity definition. Um, so if you have two sets A and B, the definition before Jacker similarity index is uh, the length of or the size of the of the intersection uh, divided by the size of the the union. Um, okay, so of course, if the A and B are completely equal, is going to be one. If they have zero intersection, you're going to get zero. So the value for the, the Jacobs similarity index is between zero and one. One is the most similar, and zero is um, least similar so this is for sets so will tell me like um we have graphs what are, what sets are you talking about so basically what you can think of is a uh, so graph itself is defined as um so you have a set of vertices and a set of edges between um uh between the edges like the relationship between the between the vertices so of course the 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 graph you're going to create by a part by a part of your data is going to still have the same number of vertices because they have the same features, but it's going to have different edges, and like uh, possibly. And uh, what you want to compare is like if the the sets of edges are similar or not, basically. So the implementation itself um, uh, is going to like. Uh, basically you have to extract the uh, the the edges and see if you have so the edges are like okay if we have the definition of edges here um definition of the graph um so yeah, so this is a causal graph. It's uh, made of two sets, V and E. So V is the number of vertices, as we said, like between two graphs created with the same, with like partitions of the data. V is going to be the same, but E is going to be different. And E is uh, like a set of, um, let me find it here. Um, so what I want is the definition of a graph. Let's see, so it can be here. Yeah. This one I'll tell you, uh, like, yeah, so, right, so this is the edge. 
So it's a set of, um, uh, let's say, X and Y is going to be an edge between X and Y. And of course, if we are using a directed graph, it's going to be an ordered pair. So X, Y means that there is a relationship between X to Y. Uh, and so basically you can compare the E for each of the graphs. I don't know if this is clear. I'm sorry that I didn't write it down. Um, but yeah, so this is like suggested to do, to measure the similarity between uh, between the, sorry, uh, yeah, lost. Similarity between like the two graphs you create. Uh, so you can do by like uh, maybe create um, a graph at 60%, this is a suggestion, 60% of the data, and then 70% and 80% and see how similar the graphs you, give, you get are. And if the like the similarity index is high enough, like if it's like reasonably high, like 70% or like 80%, then you see like, okay, um, maybe my graph is stable enough. Um, okay. So this is a suggestion. It's not part of the, what they do here in this um, in this tutorial in the in the documentation here. So okay. Hope that it was clear enough. So uh, as I said, like okay. So this all of this we did. So this is the next part. This is the one you have to get fit like, the conditional um, probability distribution. And to do that, here what me like uh, yesterday, this I didn't clarify this part. You need to disc disc uh, discretize your data. It has to be discrete. Just because the, in the in their implementation, the Cosmix implementation of of uh, Payson network for structural graphical models, they they only uh, have uh, like um, basically. Um, a discrete uh, probability distribution, not continuous. So all your variables have to be discrete. So if you have continuous uh, variables, you have to change into discrete variables. And yeah, so this like there are already functionality from from uh, code and next itself, I think. Here, um, yeah. So they have a discrete disc discretizer they can use to discretize your data, okay? So after that, what you take after you discretize your data, and of course you already created a causal graph, you take these two and you fit. But before you fit, of course, you have to split your data to train and, and test. Because like this is a machine learning basically operation here. So you're going to train your, your model with the train, uh, set and use a test uh, set to test to basically test the quality of your model so uh, this is like a, like this is a, this is a split and then you're going to fit your data with like a, with a train part um okay so wait I guess I'm going back to so yeah, so BN, this is a Bayesian network basically, is defined using the, the structural, um, as a causal graph from before, the structural model from before, SM. So this is the one we got using notiers, and just going down, you're going to fit it, um, fit node states using the train data. So this is the training part. Um, so yeah, so there are like options you can use. So uh, when you're fitting the conditional probability distribution, um, yeah, sorry, this, this is the training set, not this one. Okay, so uh, there are, as I said, there are two methods. There are Python estimator and there is a maximum um, likelihood estimator as well. And, um, uh, so the pies prior here, um, I'm not sure what it's like, uh, what is K2 in this case, but um, like, I, can, I can look actually, that is the definition of fit 
uh, CPD. But let's just um, move on from this for a moment um, because we, like, uh, again, we are running out of time. But so finally, after you do, you do this step, you have your model. And basically, you already can use it for, for inference. You can see what is your, like, um, the, the conditional proposal distribution, what that means. For example, here we're using our model to see the conditional probability distribution of D1, which is a grade um, for like um, like the grade pass or fail. And you can see its conditional probability depending on other all the all the variables that are like uh, affected. Of course, it according to our causal graph. So you can see these are the probability. Um, conditional probability distribution. So depending on, um, so uh, for, um, okay, so I have a, um, I'm searching for something that is uh, so you can see like you have sorry so these are the these are the variables that the g1 depends on so you have failures these are like uh, previous failures i think a higher this is if uh, the student wants to pursue higher education or not um uh, school uh, sub. I'm not sure what what the variable this one is. And there is a study time, and you can see like you have value for each kind of each combination of these variables. You have value for the probability for pass and fail for this grade. Okay, so this is what you get from from the after you fit the model. You can of course calculate the marginal probability the one that doesn't not the conditional the total basically that doesn't depend on the variable and um, you can also use it to in uh, like uh, predict so basically um, uh, if you have a particular like uh, you want to like uh, for example predict if a student fails or passes depending on input data so get a new like you have a test set right new data you can pass the new test data to like, like this one this is one record but you can this is just one record here it's not the prediction itself but basically um you can uh, predict the g1 on on the um, on the test part on the test data and see how much like uh, probability you get for like uh, failing or um, or um, or success, okay? Uh, it will give you like um, um, like uh, the highest uh, probability, the one with the highest probability. So it's like giving you fail because like uh, this is from from the probability this is com conditional to or, okay. From the probability distribution, this is like the highest probability is for fail. So you can use it basically for prediction. And okay, uh, to see the model quality, you can use the test set to calculate. So what you need is a test set and you need a target. And basically you can calculate either classification report or the receiver operating characterization characteristics um and so what is happening here is what is that you're passing your test and you're saying your 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 um your target is d1 of course your test data have values actual values for d1 but you're going to predict use your model to predict the value for d1 and compare it to the ground truth here and calculate the precision the like recall f1 score um, like these are like uh, the values and going to be um, uh, okay. So um, calculated for the fail or for pass and and average. Okay, 
uh, and you can see basically if your model is giving you a good uh, classification accuracy or good scores or not and um, and of course like uh, if you are not getting good results you can see like maybe your causal graph you started with was you were missing some relations um, and basically can go back and 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 uh, add things to your uh, or like add features if you're missing features if you think you're missing features or missing causation relationships uh so just uh, again so um before we saw the conditional uh, probability distribution but you can also see the marginal distribution and you can do that by like using query basically so this is going to be the marginal probability not the conditional um so this is like in total not just depending on particular combinations of uh, variables um you can also pass uh, uh, or like um, pass observations and get uh, the like uh, tell uh, like if a particular variable has this has this value what is going to be the the result um, for like, the effect on G one for example if the study time is short tell me what is the probability of G one so I'm getting like uh, for short study time i'm getting the the probability for fair and pass for long study time I, i'm getting the probability for fair and pass and you can see that like for long study time the probability of failure is less than with short study time the difference is not too big so it's a point two and this is point one five okay and finally this is the intervention as we said so this is where you tell like uh, what if I set, I set uh, a particular variable to something? For example, here the example is do, they are doing, they are taking these variables is higher. This is like the, what is the student want to pursue higher education or not? And they set its probability or the va its values to yes to be one and no to be zero. So the intervention they are proposing here basically that if, uh, somehow we convince all students to pursue higher education what is going to be the effect on um uh, or like um yeah what's going to be the effect on their grades and basically so you use do intervention and um and basically you can see the effect after like the intervention so here they're passing like first print the query of of uh, so here they are not actually like uh, they are not querying the, the effect on grades they are seeing higher itself what is the value of the probability so you have no probability of uh, 0.1 and yes is 0.89 so it's almost a hundred percent of course even after setting it to like one and zero there are some kind of um a numerical uh small numerical error here so instead of being one it's like point uh, it's point nine 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 i don't know how many of these are there but okay so this is just numerical um error here but after doing the intervention basically you can look is you can query g1 and see what is the effect on g1 this is a great and after you do the intervention you can reset uh, your distributions back by using reset so um i think that's all um i don't know like i wanted to i said yesterday was a bit too short and i wanted to go through it again um i don't know do you have any questions okay we'll give you one minute um to see like uh, it, or, or we can go back to the questions about the data if there are no questions about this it doesn't need to be about what we were talking about this round
Uh, all right, so let's so there are no questions. Um, I will suppose that everything was super clear and uh, okay. Uh, I was just reading the messages on the um, if you can just end the. Uh, Gordon here.